What is it? And what do you think? Now, don't rush him, James. How much have you bought? A dozen bottles at an auction in London and a dozen of the other. Nice tawny colour. A bit of edge on that. Medoc, of course. Margot. This is very fine, Mr. Hadley, isn't it? Mm. Not uh, premier cru, uh, second grosse. Chateau Ronson Segla, a small estate near the mouth of the Garonne, quite close to the West uh, Bank. Only 100 barrels or so annually. Rather hard to come by. Lovely. And the year? Oh, oh. <laughs> 1920, of course. The year of the century. Am I right? Absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Sir George, I don't want to disturb you, but Mr. Guthrie is here and we have business to do. Yes, yes, all right, I'll come. Mr. Hadley wanted Peter's opinion on some wine that he's bought. <laughs> we uh, have customers, Sir George. Mr. Hadley is a customer. Excuse me, please. Yes, yes, of course. All right, Peter. Mm -hmm. Now the other one. I shan't tell you what it is. <laughs> ha ha! We have changed our, our ground, haven't we? A very gravelly soil, a little lighter, softer, grand. You know better than that, Peter. Grave is a white wine. <laughs> no, not in the north of the country. Uh, the commune, Leuven, I fancy, just on the borderline, produces both. Chateau, let me see. Carbonier, Mr. Abbey. You're a wizard in the year? The year when France was finally liber liberated, 1945. Thanks. Well, I can't pretend to be a good judge of wine, Sir George. Mm, but the name of Hewson Fabia speaks for itself. We know your firm never deals in anything of inferior quality. Thank you, Mr. Guthrie. <laughs> a name rooted in history, but it is modern as tomorrow. Yes, Mr. Bennett, of course. Rather a big change for you, Sir George, going in for mass distribution. Yes, it is, but I'm trying to adjust with the guidance of my American friends. Let's get to the point, Mr. Guthrie, which is your 200 ounces supermarkets. Now, that's nice business. We'd like you to place an order Can't and... Can't go uh, wrong with these wines, Mr. Guthrie. Even the main thing, one. Mr. Guthrie, is that the product is right and the price is right. Agreed. Well, I like the name. Marianne, it's catchy. Marianne, a revolution in wine. And the point of sale material, that should be effective. Oh, yes, we're proud of it. French wine with the modern idiom. Sound, elegant, a touch fruity. Hmm. Sounds like the young lady on the advertisement. <laughs> yes, round and full-bodied. Well, right, I'll pick just, uh, just ease up on the public relations, huh? Mr. Guthrie knows we're not selling him a dog. Of course. These are good, drinkable French fan ordinaries. Your customers will let them up. <laughs> would you allow them up, Miss Tepton? Yes, I would, but then I am Mr. Edward's secretary. What else do you expect me to say? <laughs> I think you mentioned a trial order in your home counters first. How many stores you got? Ten or fifty? Not quite so fast, Mr. Edwards, if you don't mind. I'd like to ask Sir George a question first, if I may. Oh, yes. Well, that... No. Mind interrupting something? No, come and join us, James. Sure. Uh, Mr. Guthrie, this is an old friend of the company and a shareholder, Mr. James Hadley. Uh, Mr. Do? Guthrie is the chief buyer for the Honesty Supermarket chain. He's just trying out our new line. Oh, yes. Mm. Uh, give Mr. Hadley a glass, will you? Red, white or rosé, Mr. Hadley? Well, at this hour in the morning, white, I think. <laughs> I'd like to know what you think of it. You're a man who seems to know your wine. Well, if I do, it's thanks to Sir George. Yeah. What is it? Our new range, Marianne. Like it, Mr. Hadley? Uh, it's potable. Yes, it's very drinkable. <laughs> mm, sound. Round and fruity. Crisp, but not boisterous. Dear God. Uh, so what do you say, Mr. Guthrie? Say? Mm. Well, the wine seems reasonable. But you'll forgive me, Mr. Edwards. Uh, there's one thing that I'm bound to say does worry me. Mm. We can't make a promise to our customers and then not keep it. I understand there have been some unfortunate uh, shipping delays. 
Some confusion over deliveries from this firm. Ah, uh, you heard about the Princess Wine Stores mix-up, huh? Naturally. In the trade, yeah, shop well, talk, gossip. Yeah, there was a bit of confusion, I'll admit it. Unavoidable. As you know, we're new to bulk deliveries. But we are getting the bugs out. Come on up to my office. Let's see if we can work out some schedules, huh? Right, let's do that. Well, what's all this about late deliveries? That's not like you and Fabia, is it? Oh, I know. James, I must have a talk with you. I'm worried. All right. You can buy me a decent lunch at the club. Yes, we can be private there. Ah. Oh. Yes, thank you. Claret? Oh, thank you. Do you know, I've never seen you rattled like this. Oh, I suppose I'm getting old, James. Remember when I sold out my controlling interest to these Americans? I had McLaren of Baltimore. It was a year ago last month, wasn't mm. it? And they now own 51% of the equity. Mm. Well, I must say I did wonder at the time. Oh, they're splendid people. Big distillers. Yes, if you like old Kentucky bourbon. Colonel Tim, wasn't it? <laughs> what made you do it? Having no heir. One hates to see a 150-year-old family business simply wither away. On the vine? So I felt about the Gazette. Mm. Oh, I'm still chairman, as you know, and I've held on to 15% of the shares. Well, that makes 30% between the two of us. So why the depression? What is it? The new approach? Oh, I hate it. You know, we used to get along so comfortably. I mean, Peter Belpa and I'd go off to the Burgundy sales in Bone every year, then we'd scout round the Bordeaux Chateau. We bought only the best, but now... Cheap wine in supermarkets is this Marianne range that's getting you down, well, isn't it? I have nothing against popular wine, nothing wrong with the stuff. Very good value for money. Well, what is it, then? The business aspect? Oh, it comes over in tankers, James. <laughs> Thousands of gallons. They pump it into our old bottling plants like so much fuel oil. Plastic pipes, fiberglass, vats. Sales first, wine second, eh? Well, that's sound business. I can't deny it. How sound? Why do you say that? There is a matter of my 15% holding in the company, you know. At the time of the takeover, your shares were standing at 18 and 6. They're down to 11 shillings now. Why? I wish I knew. You know, there's something dubious about this managing director, this fellow Edwards. He's like a doubtful wine. You know how you can tell at the first sniff when it comes from the wrong side of the hill? Well, he seems all right to me. He's just a bit smooth. Uh, you heard what Mr Guthrie said about late deliveries? Mm. Well, now, we had a very promising arrangement with a big firm of wine shops, the Princess Shops. Yeah. There was a first consignment all ready to go, hundreds of cases. And? Never reached their depot. Finished up somewhere in Shropshire. Must have pleased the customer. Ugh. I shudder to think what my father would have said. Hughes and Fabia of all firms. Oldest wine house in Yorkshire. Holders of the Royal Warrant, suppliers, the King of the Belgians, the late Princess Royal, most of the big houses. Yes, well, if you'll forgive me, that is just sentimental rubbish. It is the fall in the shares that's worrying me. Yes, I know. I keep hearing rumours from the city. Well, that Houston Fabia is in Queer Street. That Hyde McLarens are beginning to regret their takeover. James, you've got your ear to the ground. Can you find out what's happening, what's going wrong with the firm? I can always try. Thank you, James. Thank you. Ah, oh, thank you. This is old George Houston's famous manzanilla. Father used to order all he could get of it. He swore he could taste the salty tang of the desert wind in it. He was right. <laughs> Did you want a cigarette? Thank you. Do sit down. You said you wanted to talk to me in confidence. What about? In a moment, yes. You also said it was to be a working dinner. That's right, I did. I like you in that dress, you know. It's charming. Thank you. James, you have forgiven me, haven't you? I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm sorry. Forget it. It was just one of those things. Is that what you wanted to talk about? No. That's over and forgotten. Oh. That's all right, then. Well, why did you ask me to dinner? I meant it when I said it was a working dinner. As a reporter on the Gazette, I want you to undertake a confidential assignment for me. 
Involving what? Wine, my love, at least a wine merchant. Sir George Hewson? Well, the firm. Well, I thought they'd been swallowed up by an American company. Well, they have, but all's not well, according to Sir George. He's very worried. Oh, so you want me to broke the new setup, ostensibly for a story about an old Yorkshire wine firm under new management, right? And get to the bottom of certain irregularities, I'll tell you about. Shall we go and eat? You can bring your glass with you, if you like. There's a new managing director, an oily burke of a PRO, and a rather fascinating new secretary, Miss Tipton. I'd like you to fix Demeter, find out what you can about the new American management. I'll try. Between you and me, I think the old man's just suffering from a, well, a touch of injured pride. You like avocado pears, do you? should be nice and cold by now. This is very grand, champagne in the morning. Working for Sir George? I thought you'd be... Spoiled. Do you smoke, Miss Jackson? Oh, thank you. So, you're going to do a write-up on our new firm. I don't suppose I can help you much. Well, being part of the new regime, I'm sure you can tell me how you bring an old firm like Hewson Favier up to date. I can try. How long have you been with the firm? Only since Mr Edwards came. How'd you work for him before, then? No, I got the job through an agency. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Lovely. Mm -hmm. What about your PRO? Mr. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Edwards brought him into the firm. Well, is he any good? Mm, I suppose so. Vic Bennett and Associates look after other companies besides ours. Well, big ones? A few small travel agencies, I believe, and some hairdresser shops. Do you like him? He talks too much. Does Mr. Edwards like him? I suppose he must. He hired him. I see. I imagine the firm must need a pretty good public relations department, with all the troubles you're having. Uh, what troubles? Well, late delivery troubles. Teething troubles. They're not geared to mass marketing, too old-fashioned and conservative. But not for much longer. They better not be. Would well, you like some more? Oh, yes, thanks. While you're at it, you might buy me another 200 of those Barrow, Hepburn and Gale. Find the money by getting rid of the Associated Corporation Press. That's if you agree. I do. And talking about offloading, I would sell out of that wine company of yours. Uh, who's yes. Well, oddly enough, I was just going to ask your advice about that. What do you know? I reckon those shares are undervalued at 11 shillings. I wouldn't say they are. Not if Hyde and McLaren dump theirs. Oh, but if the market's holding up, that must mean there's a buyer's market as well as a seller's. No, granted, James. Well, my dear Alistair, would you kindly get off your genuine leather executive office chair and find out what the hell's going on? I have. I was lunching the other day with a jobber friend of mine who deals in that market. Um, Most of the available shares have already been picked up by some scruffy little company. Called? I shall find out. Front organisation? I shall find out. Owned by? That too, James. I shall find out. My dear Alistair, I'd be most grateful if you would. What's that? 3,000 gallons. I thought that truck would never get here. <laughs> I should have started for London an hour ago. No uh, traffic, I suppose. Traffic? Hell, it's those damn drivers and their tea breaks. Yes. Well, that fills up the vats, then. Enough to float a battleship. You know something, Sir George? There's a lot of capital tied up in that old plant out there. Liquid acids, huh? Do you know that my great-grandfather built that plant soon after Waterloo? Yeah. Hmm. Hey, I should be going. Oh, look, since you're here, there's something I want to know. Yeah? What's all this about a story in the Gazette? Miss Tipton tells me... Oh, that's... well, Mr. Hadley, merely a... Why, is something wrong? Yeah, damn it, there is plenty. Oh. All publicity is supposed to channel through Vic. He's the PR man. You know that. We discussed it. Yes, but surely a little local paper... <laughs> look, Sir George, Sir George, public relations is not just scatter shooting. The whole point is control, centralised control. Vic's briefed on company policy. He knows how to put things. Yes, yes, I'm quite sure he does. But Mr. Uh, uh, Bennett, clever though he may be, can hardly be well briefed on an old Yorkshire... Anyway, I gave Miss Tipton our Jubilee pamphlet. 
But what about Marianne? That's what we're trying to sell. All this baloney about the King of the Belgians. Ah, now, he had a fine seller. I helped him stock it. A most delightful man. And another mm. thing, I'm dropping that old wine taster off the team. We don't need him. But, Peter Belper, you mad? Oh, no, I'm not. Look, look, Sir George. We are dealing in popular wines. What we want is young salesmen who can sell, not old-timers who can taste. Peter Belper is one of the finest judges of claret in the country. He's been with this firm over 30 years. He's a master of wine. Unnecessary, he's a... and he's going. Yeah. Have you told him? I've told him he understands. What? Now, look, I've got him a job at Burke's Wine Bar on Eastgate Street and promised him six months' salary in lieu of notice. How dare you dismiss him without asking me? I am in charge of the staff, Sir George. Mr. Edwards, may I remind you that I am still chairman of Hewson Fabia? Yeah, sure, sure, you're chairman, okay. So let's pull together, huh? Have a little teamwork? Oh. oh, God. Uh. Hello there, Joe. Evening, Mr. Belvin. If you're wanting Mr. Edwards, he's just uh, left for London in his car. No, I'm not looking for Mr. Edwards. But Sir George is still here, and Miss Tipton. I don't want to see anyone, Joe. I'm going to collect some of my things. I'm no longer working for you, and Fabier. Really, sir? Uh, I've been sacked. God. Yes, Mr. Uh, Edwards has decided I'm no longer useful. So I'm going to work in a wine bar in Westdale in charge of a cellar. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Belvin. Ah, still with this new lot in charge. Uh, they don't need me anymore, Joe. They are selling wine by the gallon to grocer shops. Too bad. Not like the old days. Not at all like the old days. Good night, Joe. Good night, Dick. Nothing to report, sir. Ah. Uh, you know, what's happened to you? My what, sir? Well, your metal ribbons. Ah, well, sir, it's that, uh, that Mr. Edwards, sir. 
Well, what about him? Well, he uh, made a witticism, sir. Hmm? Yes, sir. I think he thought it was a bit, uh, what do you call, swag, sir. Me wearing them, I mean. Uh, nonsense, Joe. I like to see you wearing them. Ah, uh, not like the old days, eh, sir? Wipers, Jimmy Ridge. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, you put them back on again? Yes, sir. Uh, you do that. Well, uh, I'll, I'll just have a look round. Yes, sir. Uh, Joe... Did you know that my great-grandfather built this plant soon after Waterloo? Yes, sir, I did. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, well, I'll... I'll just have a look round. Yes, sir. Oh, evening, Mr. Tent. Evening, Joe. Uh, can I put the way bills in dispatch for you? Uh, no, that's all right. I'll do it. That wasn't Sir George, was it? Yes, miss. Oh, what on earth is he doing here at this hour? Oh, just looking around, miss. He often wanders around the old bottling plant at night. I had no idea. Oh, yes, miss. He says he can still smell the old wines. Like old, uh, you know, miss, old goose. Did he seem all right? Well, he had a glass or two, if that's what you mean. Oh, nothing out of the way, miss. Thank you, Joe. Yes, miss. Now then. That's it. Better. The puff, sir. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Uh, ah, that's better. You put them on again. Uh, yes, sir. Ah. Oh, uh, your pipes. Oh, thank you, Joe. Uh, Would you like me to drive you home, Sir George? Oh, thank you, my dear. I'm quite capable of handling my own motor car. Uh, well, then, you can drop me. It's on your way. Well, that would be delightful, my dear. But I'll have to just get my things. Uh, oh, yes. I <laughs> cannot understand how this fire started. Did all your wine go up in it, then? Oh, no, no, it's not as bad as that. Number one isn't the only bottling plant, but it is for the Marianne range, thousands of gallons down the drain. It's covered by insurance, though, isn't it? Oh, yes. But you can never replace that old building. Part of history, that was. But that's not all, James. We're in trouble again over deliveries, and you know what that means. For the supermarket deal, you mean? Yes. Finished, no doubt about that. You haven't found out anything yet, have you? Uh, Morley says the shares are down again, but that's because of the fire, of course. Yes, I know, I know. Now, there's something uncanny about it. This is my corner of the world. I'm rooted here. Now, when I go into my own office, I'm made to feel like an outsider, barely tolerated. Know what I mean? What exactly were you doing there on the night of the fire? Oh, feeling a bit down in the mouth. Edwards and I'd had a rather vulgar set, too. What about? 
Well, for one thing, he calmly announced he'd just sacked Peter Belba. Sacked him? Well, the man's mad. He's the best judge of claret in the country. I know. That's why I was so upset. Oh, anyway, uh, I had a drink or two, and, and I started thinking about my father and the family. Oh, when I get into that sort of mood, I sometimes go over to the old plant, wander about a bit. I understand Miss Tipton found you in the packing department. Yes, yes, she did. That was the founder's office, you know, in George III's time. Do you remember everything that happened? Yes, of course. Walking over to the plant? Yes. Joe's medal ribbons? Joe's medal ribbons? Yes, you told him they were crooked. And yes, yes, I did. Well, I mean to say, he'd want them straight, you see. He's an old soldier. He's proud of them. So you asked him to straighten them? Yes. And he took them off and pinned them on again? Uh, Yes, yes, I think so. You think so? Well, I can't be sure, James. I told you I was preoccupied, upset. What about your row with Edwards? Yes. Do you suspect Edwards of sucking that place on fire? Well, nobody's alleged arson. No, yet. but if they did, I mean, do you think it was Edwards? Well, he was on his way to London long before the fire broke out. Well, he could have used some sort of a timing device. You hate him, don't you? Candy, you're Miss Tipton. Well, up to a point. She's not my Miss Tipton. Up to what point? That was before the fire, of course. What a mess up to point. what point? At Burke, she and I only talked about the takeover. She gave me some background on the Hyde McLarens of Baltimore. What about Dane Edwards? Oh. Didn't get very far there, I'm afraid. She hasn't worked for him very long. She's and... mistress? Oh, doubt it. He hired her through an agency. A strict employer-employee set-up. What about after-office hours? Why, oh, doubt it. I tried to trip her up there, but uh, Miss Tipton's untrip. The untrippable Miss Tipton, eh? Well, she must have some sex life. Are you guessing or hoping? You didn't get around to those wine orders that went astray, did you, to the Princess stores? Not head on. I thought I shouldn't seem too prime. But I did ask about the Marianne wines, were they doing well and so on. Did you get a straight answer on that? She said there were growing pains, naturally. Ah. Didn't it seem upset? She said what? Inexperienced, pure and simple. Well, she's right, you know. Use and favour is new to mass marketing. Mm. Well, it's true, isn't it? Yes, it is, but it doesn't ring true. It's just too glib. And I'm worried about George Hewson. He's an old man and he's under considerable pressure, and I don't like it. Well, it seems a great pity, Peter. Oh, I don't know, Mr. Adley. Good night. My job here at uh, One Steward is quite interesting, and they are a good firm to work yeah, for. But it's such a waste, isn't it? I mean, all that knowledge, viniculture, viticulture, <laughs> soil chemistry, God knows what. You don't use it here, do you? Oh, I have no regrets. Houston uh, Fabier is not what it was. So it seems. Tell me something, Peter. Yes. Why should an important shipment of wine go astray? It never used to happen. When the wine's shipped out, how does it go? By lorry, in packing cases. And at what point exactly do they put the, the labelling or tagging or whatever it is on the cases? It used to be that uh, head office will send a list of uh, name and addresses to dispatch. The old rage, he made the way bills out. And stuck them on a case. Used to be. You mean the system's changed, then, has it? Yes, sir. The way bills are all made out now in Mr. Edward's office. I, Miss Tipton. That's right. She has a little address graph machine for the way bill. That seems fair enough. She takes a bundle down to dispatch every evening. So that's why she was at the plant on the night of the fire? Well, it would be. Whose job is it to decide which route each lorry takes? Rage again. He uh, make out uh, the destinations. You're right, Peter. That's a lovely sancerre. Ah, uh, the people don't really appreciate the loi of... Uh, Look, if there was a slip-up, say mm. some wine going to the wrong place, whose fault would it be? Mr. Edwards, most likely. The others come to him from the sales department. Mm. Ah, of course it could be Miss Tipson. When too. she makes out the way bills, you mean? Yes, uh, she could make a mistake at that stage. Mistakes do happen. I remember once, oh, years ago, 
one of her clients telephoned me and he said, Peter, what is the color of the Vouvray? <laughs> I say, it's a white one, naturally. And then he say, well, it may come at a surprise, but you have just sent me five dozen bottles of the ordinary Vouvray <laughs> in existence. What went wrong? <laughs> we had a lad running the labeling machine. His man was not on his work. That's all. I think he was in love. So all this could be just carelessness, could it? No more than innocent carelessness. Well, uh, it could be, Mr. Hadley. But you don't think it is, do you, Peter? Well, uh, I don't know what to think. With all due respect, Mr. Hadley, I can't quite see what right you have here at this meeting. Well, I've come at the invitation of the chairman. And as a prominent shareholder, will that do? Yeah, well, I guess it'll have to. All right, let's get going. <clears throat> Mr. Hadley's a friend of mine, Mr. Edwards. I said all right, Sir George. <clears throat> Gentlemen, I've had a report from the underwriters. And it's a stinker. Oh, you've already seen it, have you, Mr. Bennett? Well, it is a public relations problem. Now, may I say that it is not customary in this country for the chairman of a company... Nobody's bypassing you, what Sir George. What exactly does the report say? That the fire was not accidental. Not accidental? No, Sir George. And that the insurers are refusing the claim. Their investigations say that it was arson. They have proof. Proof? The fire started in the packing department. You know the place, Sir George, where you keep all those old straw bottle wrappers? Mm -hmm. Their chemists have evidence that the straw was doused with petrol. Did you smell any petrol, Sir George, when you were there only a few minutes before? No, I didn't. But you were in the packing department, weren't you? Uh, why? That's where Miss Tipton found you. Yes? She suggested that you leave. She turned out the lights and followed you out. Yes, that's right. Where, Joe says, she offered to drive you home. Yes, she did. Why should she do that? Well, I suppose she was just being kind. Kind? Look, Sir George, you'd had a skinful, had you not? A decanter and a bottle. The cleaners found them here on this table next morning. And this ashtray, chock full of pipe tobacco and burned up ashes. I was not intoxicated, if that's what you're trying to infer. Sir George, I am suggesting that you'd had a few drinks and wandered into the plant. Joe says you weren't exactly steady. You went into the packing department, your pipe went out, you relit it. How do you light your pipe, Sir George? Oh. With matches, Mr. Edwards. Now, you know that as well as I do. So you lit your pipe and dropped the match into the straw. By accident, okay? But I didn't. Now, that's the way it happens, Sir George, by accident. The company's going to accept responsibility. We shall waive our claim. The insurers won't have to pay, so they'll forget about the petrol. Sure, we'll take an awful beating financially, but we will avoid a scandal. I am ready to accept your resignation, Sir George. From the public relations point of view, is really the wisest course. If we did try and press our claim, the underwriters might prosecute on the evidence. But it's a downright lie. I did no such thing. Sir George, I am trying to make it easy for you. I'm giving you a way out. You're so... trying to blackmail me out of the chairmanship. Blackmail? Oh, so you want to play it rough, huh? Okay, then. I suggest you plan the whole thing, Sir George. You started that fire and you know it. I suggest you watch your step, Mr. Edwards. Now, why should I try and destroy my own business? I'll tell you why. You have been eaten away with jealousy ever since Hyde McLaren sent me over here. You've had one aim and one aim only, to discredit me, my methods and my staff. Well, here's what I'm going to do now. I intend to mail a full report to Hyde McLaren. Every detail of this lousy deal. I'm going to ask them to send me back to the States. I've had it, Sir George. You and I simply cannot work together. Let Hyde McLaren decide whether you go or me. Oh, that's a very vicious course to take, Mr. Edwards. Okay, Mr. Hadley. I think I should tell you, in this country at least, it could well be actionable. Yeah, okay, okay. Sue me, Mr. Hadley. I'll be very interested to see what your courts do about a legal action proposed by a man who's already in jail for burning down a factory that belongs to someone else. Come on, Vic, let's get out of here. You do like doing things the hard way, Sir George, don't you? Good day, sir. Now, thank you to leave my boardroom. A pleasure. Could any...
Edwards possibly be right? I mean, is there anything at all in what he said? No, there is not. Now, look, you've just got to be certain about oh, this. James, can't you leave me alone either? I thought you were a friend. I can't sleep. I get these terrible headaches. Sorry, I've just got to ask you this question. Now, how far from sober were you that night? I hadn't had a skinful or whatever that vulgarism of Edwards was. I can remember everything that happened. Everything? Joe's medal ribbons, for instance? Yes. You told him they were crooked and you asked him to pin them on straight, did yes. you? Yes. Joe wasn't wearing his medal ribbons that night. Not at first. He confirmed it. Can't remember a thing. Not a single thing. Just being driven home by that young woman. Am I going out of my mind or something? Am I, James? It's all right, all right. Now, are you sure? There's no doubt about it, James. There is a market for Houston Fabia shares, at the cut price, of course. Well, who's buying them, do you know? Well, you remember the little firm I mentioned to you before? Yes. Well, I found out its name now. They're people called LB Projects Limited. LB, all one word? Yes, E-L-B-E-E. -E -E. Well, I've never heard of them, have you? No, it must be a very small company. Its shares are certainly not quoted in the stock exchange, and it's not in any of the usual reference books. But you do understand that I didn't want to snoop around too obviously. We brokers don't usually ask to see each other's contract notes. No, but you're still trying, aren't you, to identify them, I mean? Yes, but gently, James. LB. Gently. LB. It sounds like a toy manufacturer to me. Yes, or cosmetics. LB for your complexion. Because it could be somebody's initials, couldn't it? Yes. LB. Yes, I'd thought about that. A one-man business. So one of my chaps is going to Somerset House this afternoon, so we should be able to pin it down. I hope. Good. Look, I've got to go into Westdale this afternoon for a meeting at Houston Fabia, so if you get anything, would you call me there? Where? In the boardroom? Yes. No. No, wait a minute. Perhaps you'd better not come through the company switchboard. Would you put in a call to the Gazette? A girl called Susan Japs. Does she know all about yes, this? Yes, it does. Uh, look, it's, um, it's very urgent, so do what you can, will you, Alistair? I'm sorry to barge in like this, James. It's all right, come in. Thank you. Sit down, do you want a drink? Uh, no, no, nothing, thanks. Ah. Well? James, I've been thinking it over. It's not fair to saddle you with my problems anymore. I mean, it's no use. Just give it up. Why? Oh, come now. You know why. Now, look, I know that I'm innocent, no matter what Mr. Dane Edwards thinks or says he thinks. But I must admit, and I'm ashamed to, that I was far from sober on the night of the fire. Are you trying to tell me that you might have started that fire after all? Oh, no, no, I'm hmm? not. Now, listen, I could never do anything drunk or sober that would harm the family business, even if it's not strictly ours any longer. James, if Houston Fabia failed tomorrow, do you know what I'd do? No. I'd buy a few bottles of decent claret, rent a little shop somewhere and start all over again. We began in a small way, you know. When the first Houston met the first Fabier not long after Waterloo, there was just a tiny little warehouse on the Bordeaux waterfront and one scarcely seaworthy lugger. And our first clans were a handful of innkeepers in Hull. <laughs> you, uh, you still own 15% of the shares, don't you? Yes. Well, you're going to need all the cash you can get, you know. If the underwriters prosecute, you're going to be charged with fraud and with arson. But I don't follow you, James. Well, you're not get out for now in a courtroom, you know. I'll buy your shares at the old price. Will you sell? Sell? What, all that I have? Cut my last links with Hughes and Fabian? Now, James, I don't want to impugn your motives, whatever they may be. It is a generous offer. But if this is charity in disguise, the answer is no thank you. And if you're telling me that the firm would get on better without me, well, you're no doubt right, but the answer is still no thank you. And if you're telling me to say goodbye to a century and a half of honourable family business, well, forgive me, James, but I'll see you damned first. I'm very glad you said that, Sir George. That's all the proof I needed. Proof? 
What do you mean? Well, if you had been sabotaging the firm, as Edward suggests, you'd have been delighted to unload your shares at the old price. James, you didn't believe me, did you, until just now? <laughs> well, I suppose I ought to be offended, but somehow or other I'm not. What's the next step, then? Find out what the hell Mr. Edward's game is. Give him enough rope and then God knows how tighten the noose and all that before the meeting this afternoon because after that he's going to send his report to the States. Well, we haven't got much time. Well, I've been digging out quite a battery of facts about mm -hmm. Mr. Edwards. There's just one piece of the puzzle missing. If I can get hold of that, you're out of trouble. And Mr. Dane Edwards is out of Houston Fabia. Oh, glad you could make it, Sir George. This meeting was called for half an hour ago. Yes, I am sorry to be late. Okay, now if you don't mind, let's uh, let's get started. Mm -hmm. I got the full report here for Hyde McLaren's. You can have a look at it as far as I'm concerned. You know what's in it anyway. No, I don't think I want to go into that until I have the benefit of Mr. Hadley's advice. What's James Hadley to you? Your lawyer or something? No, 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 just a friend. I don't think it's necessary to have any legal advice yet. Come in. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Ah, oh, Jay. I hope you don't mind my joining you this afternoon. Oh. Uh, Mr. Edwards wanted me to uh, see his report to the American owners. What do you think? Well, I think it's a waste of time. It's a very nice gesture, Mr. Edwards, but I think both Sir George and I are willing to take it as read. Yes, indeed. I doubt whether what you have to say would surprise us in any case. I can get you off the hook, you know. I'd just as soon forget this report. Scrap the whole mess. Oh? On two conditions. The first being that I resign the chairmanship. Uh-huh. And the second? That you sell me your 15% holding in the company at the current price. Yes, to prevent the chairman from using unparliamentary language, I think I can answer that for him. He'll see you damned first. Hadley, why don't you keep out of this, huh? I'm talking to Sir George. Well, there seems to be a brisk market in Houston Fabia shares. That's the second offer I've had today. Yeah? Uh, who made the first? Oh, some little London firm called, um, uh, oh, let me see, um, uh... No, call what? <laughs> it was an odd, frivolous sort of name. Uh, LB Projects. Would that be it? Never heard of them. Uh, what did you tell them? Well, I'm afraid I told them I'd see them damn first. What about you, Mr. Bennett? You ever heard of them? LB Projects? No. Why should I? Yes. Oh, Miss Tipton. Uh, James, there's a uh, Miss Jackson. Oh, excuse me. No, no, not on the phone. No, she's here. She wants oh. to see you. Sorry about this. Oh, that's all right. We can wait. Look, why don't you ask her <coughs> to come up? Yes, of course. <coughs> um, Miss Tipton, will you bring Miss Jackson here, please? Yes, to the boardroom. Hey, now, wait a minute. Is that the girl on the Gazette? Yeah. Now, look, I don't want reporters here coming in the middle of a boardroom meeting. That's all right, Mr. Edwards. It won't take a moment. It's uh, just a little information I've been waiting for. Ah, Miss Tipton, we meet again. Come in, Susan. Miss Tipton, you'd better be in on this. Oh, by the way, Miss Tipton, I've got something that belongs to you. You have? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I dropped them into my handbag by mistake. That day we met at Burke's. Oh, why worry? What's a book of matches? Well, they are yours, aren't they? Oh, yes. Thank you. Miss Jackson, would you mind telling me exactly what you're doing here? Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I have a message for Mr. Hadley from your stockbroker. Oh, go ahead. That's all right. We've got no secrets here. Have we, Mr. Edwards? Well, he asked me to tell you that the chief registered shareholder of LB Projects is a Mrs. Victor Bennett. Ah, very interesting. Well, what a small world, isn't it? What do you think, Mr. Bennett? And how curious that Mrs. Bennett virtually owns LB Projects, and yet Mr. Bennett has never even heard of them. Well, I haven't, and that's that. <laughs> Must be my ex-wife gone into business on her own. Really? When did you last see her? I haven't seen her for years. Oh, how very sad. Still, journeys end in lovers' meetings, don't they? I don't see what this is going to do with Sir George oh, and the question come, of Come, Mr. Edwards, enough. you really mean to say that you've never heard of LB Projects? No, I haven't. And you, Mr. Bennett, do you really claim that you've no connection with this company? Look, nobody can hold me responsible for anything my ex-wife does, and I haven't better try. Oh, may I interrupt? Uh, 
Miss Tipton, uh, would you mind letting me see those book matches again? Why? Well, I told you a lie just now. This isn't the same book you had at Burke's. It's another one exactly like it. I picked these up in what was left of the packing department at the bottling plant after the fire. Odd, isn't it? How a little scrap of cardboard... Anyone could have dropped them. They're just ordinary matches. <coughs> oh, yes, they are. And anyone could have. But I think you did. I think you'd better watch what you're saying, Miss Jackson. Oh, I'm being very careful, Miss Tipton. According to Joe, the night watchman, before following Sir George out of the bottling plant, you stayed behind for a minute or two. To turn out the lights, so you say. But it only takes a minute to empty a tin of petrol on some straw and drop a lighted match. But you got flustered, didn't you? And you dropped the evidence. What makes you think the matches are, Miss Tipton's? Well, look at them. L.B. You did get flustered, didn't you, Mrs. Bennett? Mrs. Lucille Bennett. L.B. I should be careful what you say in front of witnesses, Miss Jackson. It's the truth. When Miss Tipton gave up being a secretary, she went into public relations. And before long, she joined Vic Bennett and Associates. After about a year, she and Mr. Bennett were married, weren't you? The happy couple then set up LB projects. Is this true, Mrs. Bennett? There's not a single word of truth in anything that she has said. It's all lies. Is it all lies? No, no, what's the use? Oh, come, come, Now, Mr. look, I don't know what he's been getting up to behind oh, my I'd back. I'd rather think you do, you know. You see, it wouldn't be very difficult to prove that you and the Bennets have been parties to a conspiracy to wreck this firm in order to pick up the shares cheap. Yeah, however, that is not going to be necessary. You see, I've been in touch with your Mr Hyde in the States. He's been doing some investigating. He was very embarrassed by what he learned. Embarrassed by what? Little matter on the Los Angeles stock exchange of artificially driving down a company's shares in order to pick them up at a bargain price by Mr. Not Dane, but Donald Edwards. Now, that's very similar, don't you think? I mean, not just the name, but the system also. And do you know something else? There's a warrant out for your arrest in Los Angeles, Mr. Edwards. Now, look, I've never set foot in Los in Angeles. Los Angeles? I... Well, it's a very pleasant place, I understand. That's in between the swamps, but you can tell that to the police, can't you? Oh, Hadley, come well, on now. Easy, Mr. There? Edwards, please. You see, before you and your associates return to the States, you're going to be fairly busy here. Answering charges of fraud, arson and conspiracy. Shall we go? Hmm. Glass of wine? Well, it should be. It's 59. It's a present from a grateful Sir George. What sort of sentences do you think they'll get? Stiff ones, I hope. What about the firm? Mm. Well, they're getting a new managing director, and then Peter Belba and George are going off on one of their famous grape crawls to Koblenz this time, I think. I'm glad Peter Belban's got his job back. Would you mind telling me one thing? How on earth those book matches survived that fire? That place must have been gutted. Oh, don't suppose they did. Well, she wasn't to know. Do you mean to say that you manufactured evidence against that young lady? Not really. I just tripped the untrippable. Well, where the hell did you get the book matches from? Well, I dropped them into my handbag by mistake. That day we met at Burke's wine bar. I never thought they'd come in quite so handy. Tell me, Inspector, who's your next victim going to be? 